Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another Madden 21 preview. Uh, in today's video, I'll be going over the top 10 teams that I consider sleeper teams. These are the teams that aren't necessarily considered the best teams in the game, but they match up right with them. I'm going to show you some teams that whether you're playing CFM or regs, these are going to be the teams that you can compete with the best teams in the league right away. The next video I want to do is top 10 teams. If you guys want to see that, the best teams in the game uh, for CFM or regs, uh, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section i'll do that next other than that let's go and let's get right into the video so starting off we have the jaguars the jaguars are a team that almost made uh my top five worst teams to use which is a video i just made i'll put a link in the description for the the videos from this series you can see their offensive line has the top two positions so their offensive line is pretty solid uh but ultimately like i said it's their weaponry that really makes this team in my opinion a really good team to to use and build leonard fournette is a do-it-all back he has the speed and power and the catching ability to do whatever you need a running back to do he's criminally underrated the receivers uh, in DJ Chark, Day Day Westbrook, Chris Conley, and Lavisky Chenault, who they just drafted last year, which are all 92, 93 speed type guys anyway. Then you go to the defensive side, lots of young talent as well. Yannick Ngakwe, Josh Allen, the first round pick last year, excellent pass rusher, already had, uh, what, 10 and a half sacks or something like that. I mean, he's an A6 overall player, which is all that really matters. They drafted a third defensive end in Caleb on Chase on. They got good linebackers. Joe Schobert, they just brought in. Miles Jack. And then you get to the second secondary and they just brought it they just drafted cj henderson another first round pick next up we got the broncos here's a team that's mostly known for his defense but i think that with the draft they just had they're going to change all that uh but looking at the defense first i mean this is definitely where the most developed players are i mean you definitely still have a top five top 10 caliber defense here with von miller leading the way bradley chubb on the other side uh the secondary is very strong even though they lost uh some players but justin simmons is one of the highest rated safeties in the game kareem jackson obviously an 87 and A.J. Boye they brought over. Jarrell Casey, still a really good player. Putting him on the defensive line. I mean, some really strong additions to an already really strong unit. Bryce Callahan comes in. He can He's a speedster. The offense, on the other hand, reminds me of a lot of the Jaguars. A lot of young talent around their quarterback. A lot of young weaponry. Their running backs are great. They added Melvin Gordon, who's one of the better running backs in the league, to an already uh, good-looking young running back in Phillip Lindsay. So the two running back set's going to be insane. The receiving core is even... I'm even more excited about the receiving core. Corlin Sutton, an up-and-coming player. He's like six foot three, six foot four, gives you that tall receiver you want. And then you got Jerry Judy, who they drafted in the first round, came back around and drafted another young receiver in KJ Hamlin, who I like even more. Five foot eight, 94 speed. I mean, that guy is an absolute burner. So your receiving core is set for years. They're all on young rookie contracts. They're going to cost much. And then you also drafted Noah Fant last year. Uh, but I actually really like the Lions. They have another, another team with a lot of young talent. Uh, the receiving core is pretty much set in stone, uh, just like some of the other teams that i'm mentioning kenny galladay probably should be rated higher in my opinion that guy's a monster led the league in touchdowns last year marvin jones is a solid number two veteran guy they also have a really good young tight end at tj hawkinson um who easily once again you'll be able to work him up real fast solid quarterback out of all the teams i mentioned so far definitely the best quarterback play out of matthew stafford and then you get to the running backs one more time and when they got carry on johnson who looked like a stud last year i think he got hurt then they went out and drafted DeAndre Swift in the second round. This guy had a first round grade. Another really solid running back. The offensive line solid too. Ragnall was the highest rated. Taylor Decker, I thought he's been having a pretty good career. I don't know how he's only a 74. But then on the defensive side, um, I mean, they're surprisingly well built, even though I don't think their defense necessarily played great last year. Made a lot of really good additions, most of which are from the New England Patriots, which is where their defensive coach, head coach comes from. Trey Flowers, uh, you know, their best pass rusher. They brought in Jamie Collins, who had a solid comeback year. Year last year once he went to new england danny shelton i was i'm pretty sure was in new england for a time great run stopping dt deron Harmon, uh backup safety always a good third safety in new england finally get a chance to start he's a good player um so all these guys really fill out a pretty solid looking defense i mean the secondary especially you have uh, desmond trufant they brought over from atlanta to give you a solid cornerback on one side and then if you roll down a little bit jeff okuda who i think was the fourth pick where they picked him next up we got the Bengals. now i know what you might be thinking if you're following this series uh, didn't I put the Bengals on the top five worst teams list? Yeah, I did. And to be honest with you, I, I kind of had an issue with it as I was doing it. Uh, ultimately, I really do like the Bengals roster. I'm going to go over the reasons why. Number one, their front four is probably as good as you could ask for. Geno Atkins, DJ Reader, uh, Carlos Dunlap, and Carl Lawson. 
all in the top five, all above 80. But that's a solid front four. You want your front four to make plays, and that front four can make plays. After that, I think it's most important to have a strong secondary, and they have that too. If you look at their next couple of players on their list, I mean, William Jackson, 93 speed cornerback. I think he's a former first round pick. He's like six foot something, six foot one, solid size and speed guy. I mean, he's solid for a number one cornerback. Still young enough that you can work him up a little bit. Jesse Bates and uh, Von Bell. I'm pretty sure Von Bell they just brought over. That's a solid pickup, 79 overall. Uh, Trey Waynes they just brought over. Another guy, 93 speed, six foot. I mean, that's solid. Still young enough, you might be able to work him up as well. Mackenzie Alexander, they bring him in uh, to be the slot cornerback. Uh, former first round pick, I think, from the Vikings. Maybe it was a second round pick. Um, but he's another young guy. He's just kind of short is really his only issue. And ultimately, it's the offensive side that I really like. I mean, their weaponry, like I said, just having good weapons is important to me. One of the biggest reasons I put them on the, the bottom five list was their offensive line is is complete garbage. And that's still going to be an issue. But like I said, if I'm building a team in a CFM, this is going to be a great team to pick because they already have a uh, number one pick in Joe Burrow, um, who's, you know, ab- ab- as far as uh, other quarterbacks that I've highlighted, the young quarterbacks I've highlighted, he's far and above them as far as rating. He's way ahead of them. And then you look at the weapons around him. I mean, he's pre- they're pretty much loaded, which is, sounds funny coming from the Bengals. But when you have Joe Mixon, who's obviously a beast, the highest rated player, receivers like A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, John Ross, and his amazing speed at a 96 speed. And then they drafted a first round receiver. I'm sorry, a second round receiver in T. Higgins, who had a first round grade. Next up, we have the Browns, and this is another reason why I have the Bengals on a bottom five list. There's really good teams in the division they play. So if you pick them in a the CFM, you're going against the Ravens, you're going against the Steelers, and the Browns who are on the come up. Uh, looking at the, uh, the, the you know, we'll start off with the quarterback because that's what we typically do, and I have to go down a little bit. Baker Mayfield definitely had a bad year last year compared to his rookie year, and I'm way more concerned with the weapons that you have around that player because ultimately, I mean, Nick Chubb is a star on the rise. That guy is a monster, and he's not even, I mean, he might not even be the best back on the team kareem hunt if you remember not too long ago was one of the best backs in the league as well and he's a backup so looking at your two back running back set can't get much better than that looking at the receiving core i mean odell beckham a little bit of a down year mostly his own fault because he just didn't seem to want to be there jarvis landry obviously one of the best slot receivers in the game and then they added austin hooper then on the defensive side, they're pretty built too. I mean, Miles Garrett's one of the best defensive ends in the game. Their front seven solid all around. I mean, they also have Olivia Vernon, who they traded for not too long ago last year. Uh, Sheldon Richardson, uh, Adrian Claiborne. I mean, you can see their front their front four has a lot of talent. So when you go to the secondary, which is probably one of the most important things, Denzel Ward, 95-speed cornerbacks don't grow on trees, people. Then you have uh, Carl Joseph they just brought in, who was a big hitting safety from the Raiders. Uh, they also brought in uh, Greedy Williams and the draft last year. I mean, that guy's what, he's six foot three, 93 speed. Still got to work him up. Uh, but you can see, I mean, there's definitely a lot of potential on the defense. So next up, we got the Carolina Panthers. I know they lost Cam Newton. I know they lost Luke Keekley. I know they lost uh, James Bradbury. They lost a lot of players, but they still have a lot of really good young players. They've drafted really well, especially when it comes to Madden. Uh, we'll start off with the front four. Kawan Short, still one of the best defensive tackles in the game. That's not going to change. And he leads off a pretty solid front four with Brian Burns, first round pick from last year. 80 88, once again, 88 speed, uh, you know, players, defensive ends don't grow on trees. Their number one pick was Derek Brown. This is a guy, that's this year, I think it was like the eighth pick. Um, he's going to be a guy that, you know, can do it all. Uh, and then you go down a little bit, their second round pick was Yatir Gross Matos. Uh, but it's a secondary that's still really solid. Dante Jackson, 96 speed cornerbacks don't grow on trees. Like I'm saying, he's an A2 overall. He's fast. He's not going to get burned deep. He's one of my favorite cornerbacks in the game just because of that speed. Trey Boston is a solid safety. And you go to another draft pick, Jerry. Jeremy Chin, six foot three safety, almost a 90 speed. He looks a lot like Derwin James. And then also Eli Apple rounds out the cornerbacking core. I mean, a former first round pick, still young, 92 speed. So definitely a solid foundation on defense. And then on the offensive side, I think the offensive side's even better. I mean, ultimately, you have the human cheat code and Christian McCaffrey because they have a really good underrated receiving core. DJ Moore is a young star on the rise. Robbie Anderson, speedster. They're all speed. All the guys I'm going to name right now are speedsters. Curtis Samuel's probably my favorite out of all of them. He came on strong last year. Uh, it was kind of thought of as a bit of a gadget guy, but he's turning into a really good receiver. So that's your three-wide receiver set, and they're all bosses, in my opinion, because their speed is, is 93 and above, all of them. The next team on my list uh, feels a little bit funny 
wanting to call him a sleeper. It's the Falcons. Uh, Julio Jones, still a human cheat code. They'll probably have the best quarterback play out of any team that I mentioned with Matt Ryan. He's getting up there in the age a little bit. But when you have that combo, then you add Calvin Ridley on the rise. Obviously a great young receiver, 93 speed. Bring over Todd Gurley. He's, I mean, he's, I don't know what he is in real life, but Madden still seems to love him. He's had a great career. So they're giving him an A6 overall. Gives them probably the best running game that they've had in a long time. And then the offensive line's pretty solid too. They also brought in Hayden Hurst to give themselves a good young tight end to replace the one that they lost. On the defensive side, they're pretty solid too. I mean, they still have a really solid interior with Grady Jarrett, Deion Jones, and Keanu Neal. They added a really good piece in Dante Fowler Jr. to Karis McKinley too. Still really young defensive end with a lot of speed. So you can work those guys up. But the secondary is probably the biggest issue because they lost their best cornerbacks. Um, you really got to rely on young guys. Kendall Sheffield though, great athlete. And then A.J. Terrell, who was uh, I think their first round pick this last year. is only 70 overall right now, but once again, a great athlete. Next up, we got the Chargers. Now, now we're getting into teams that I seriously considered putting in my top 10 teams. I mean, they have the secondary is just lights out. Secondary to me is one of the most important things. And I'm picking the C a CFM team. Typically, the secondary is where I start because it's nothing worse than getting cooked because your cornerbacks or your safeties are trash. They don't have that problem with Casey Hayward Jr., a cornerbacking trio of Casey Hayward Jr., Chris Harris Jr., and Desmond King II. They have a three cornerback core that, you know, for the most part, it's going to be there with you the next three, four, five seasons. And if you're playing in a regs mode, they might be the best cornerbacking trio in the game. Uh, moving on, we also have some really good safety help with Derwin Jr. James. Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram are absolute game wreckers and you have one on each side of the ball. Uh, the defensive front as a whole with Linval Joseph, a really good run stopper, can also get some pressure up the middle. The linebacking core is pretty solid too. Uh, they just drafted in the first round, moved up to get Kenneth Murray. Uh, and I didn't even mention last year's first round big uh, Jerry Tillery. So much young talent on the defensive side of the ball. This is definitely one of the best young defenses in the game. On the offensive side, they have a lot of weapons as well. A solid offensive line. I mean, probably one of the best offensive lines out of any of the teams I'm going to mention with Mike Pouncey, Trey Turner, Brian Bulaga they just brought in. Uh, but like I said, I really care more about the weaponry. And Keenan Allen and Mike Williams give you a solid receiving duo. Hunter Henry also, big guy, one of the better tight ends in the game. Uh, the most explosive guy they have is probably Austin Eckler. Uh, a quarterback, it's it's not, I want to call it hurting, but you have your young quarterback in Herbert who, if you're in a CFM, you're going to want to start right away. And if you're in a regular game, it might be better, you might be better off starting Tyrod Taylor running like a dual quarterback system. So staying in division, the next team, and this is another team, could have been in my top 10, but I think I would have turned some heads if it would have been because a lot of people don't think of the Raiders like that. But the Raiders have an amazing roster. This definitely, They definitely have the best offensive line out of any of the teams on this list. I know I said that about the Chargers, but Rodney Hudson, Absolute, I mean, 93 overall center, one of the best centers in the game. Richie Incognito, 90 overall. Trent Brown, the guy they brought over last year, 90, or 87 overall. Then they got some young guys, like uh, if I got to go down the list a little bit here, they have a young uh, Colt Miller, I think it was their first round pick. So you can work him up. And I think I passed over Gabe Jackson. So all five of their linemen are solid and worth mentioning. Then you get to the weaponry. Josh Jacobs had a really solid rookie year. I mean, the guy looked like a beast. Uh, they bumped him up all the way to an 88. Not a speed guy, but definitely a workhorse back. I mean, you can run inside with him all day. I think he's got pretty good hands as well. Uh, Darren Waller came out of nowhere to give them one of the best tight ends in Madden, uh, which is that 89 speed is just, I mean, how many times do you have a tight end that can stretch the field like that? Then they, they didn't stop there. I mean, they went out and they added some receivers. Tyrell Williams, uh, 92 speed, six foot three receiver, solid, but they added Nelson Aguilar. He's a good slot guy. And then Henry Ruggs and his 98 speed, his ridiculous 98 speed of this offense. So great three wide receiver set. Front four and front seven especially are really loaded with a lot of young talent. Maurice Hurst, um, I'm surprised he's the highest rated. I think Max Crosby, who had a monster year last year, probably should be the highest rated out of this defensive front four. Uh, Cleveland Farrell was the fourth fourth pick last year in the draft. And then the secondary, they had a lot of guys. Demarius Randall, uh, DeMar LaMarcus Joyner, who's a six foot two cornerback. Uh, but they have a lot of young cornerbacks like Trayvon Mullen. Uh, and they also have Jonathan Abram, who was a first round pick last year. But a big hitter with speed. I mean, he's a perfect guy a little bit short but if you play a cover through anything where he's in the box i think he's going to be a solid player and then last but not least we have a team that definitely could have been in my top 10 once again maybe maybe one of the best offensive lines i'm going to show in this list uh quentin nelson is obviously a beast a stud young uh, left guard uh anthony costanzo solid ryan kelly another guy a, a mover 
Um, you already have some really good receivers in T.Y. Hilton, but over the last two years, they added some really good young receivers that you can make, uh, you can move up quick. Michael Pittman Jr. last year in the second round, I think he's like a six foot two, six foot three guy, big guy. Paris Campbell, speedster. I mean, they lost one of their tight ends as well, but they still have Jack Doyle, who's a really strong uh, blocking tight end. They brought in Trey Burton, too, if you want that speed guy, 85 speed. Can't ask for more than that. With Marlon Mack, uh, who's a pounder, and then they went and added in the draft. I mean, they already, and Naheem Hines is fast, too. You got a 93 speed guy, but they went and added another 93 speed guy in Jonathan Taylor in the second round, early in the second round. I think their biggest issues on defense, uh, they have a solid front seven uh, with the additions of Buckner, Darius Leonard, still one of the best young linebackers in the game. Justin Houston still playing at a high level. Um, they lost a couple guys, though. The secondary is definitely pretty solid, too. With Malik Hooker, former first round pick coming on. Rocky Sin, a good young player. So that's it. That's the list. If you guys want to see another one of these best teams, top 10 best teams, let me know in the comment section with the like button. I'll do that next. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. I'm shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.